typical day might be going to visit a school to do an assessment with a child, um, if it's an EHC, a statutory piece of assessment, um, working, what, observing a child, talking to the teachers or adults who know the child best in that setting, uh, working with the child themselves, do some assessments to talk to them and gain their views and also talking to the child's parent or carer about how they view the current situation. I feel that a, a myth, if you want to call it a myth out there, is that our bread and butter is to do cognitive assessments because that is just one thing which an educational psychologist could do to help answer questions. At the end of the day, I feel what our job is, is to find out what those questions are um, and who can answer them best. And it's not always going to be the educational psychologist who can answer them because actually the parent might hold the answer, the child might hold the answer, the school may be able to hold the answer. There might be times too that we feel actually maybe the educational psychologist's toolkit is best situated to answer those questions. So it's about trying to work out what's going on there. It's not that we will go in and we'll be doing this or that. Thinking about what's happening um, at, a, at a more systemic level when we're looking about clusters of children, young people, working with senior leadership team to work out what those needs are. I think they'll meet with somebody who will listen very carefully to what's going on, who will consider everybody's views, and I think importantly keep the child in the centre. So an important strand of our work is um, something called um, crisis work or a critical incident. So if there were an unexpected bereavement, for example, in a school, then we can be going in and providing that support primarily to the senior leadership team, but also the, the teachers as well in terms of kind of working about how we can kind of um, support the emotion which is going on in the school at that time. In addition to working with individual children, we also work at the systemic level. So, um, for example, I've worked with um, staff members systemically in order to support particular members of staff who support children's social and emotional well-being through work discussion groups. That involved meeting weekly with uh, three members of pastoral staff to help them think about how they support children in their setting. You've got, to, you've got to practice what you preach. I'm, I'm, I'm very hot on something called metacognition. It's this idea about thinking about your thinking, right? So you can have a, a really intelligent child or young person and they're, they're really struggling at their work because actually they're not applying those skills. It doesn't matter if you've got those skills if you're not applying them. I think, I think it's really important um, to acknowledge that we're all going to be experts in our own way. Yeah, I might have some expertise in psychology, which I can kind of bring to the table to help people think about you know, are there different ways to think about this? Are there needs that we haven't thought about? But at the same time, mum and dad, they're going to be the experts of their child at home, without question. School, they're going to be the experts in terms of what education provision they think they can be putting in place. So with all of that, it was just working in collaboration together. So I'm often talking to teachers, like, we've got to think about how we can get that child to be more aware of their learning. And actually, from our perspective, that starts from getting them on board when we're involved.